Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. As I promised in this lesson we are going to make the player game object invisible and we are going to freeze its position immediately upon colliding with the obstacle. So we can avoid this issue. Therefore we will still be able to see the animation of the particle system but will not be able to move anymore after we collide with the obstacle. When we finish this, I think our game should be complete. So once again, open up the player collision script. First off, we'll need a few more variables. The first one is going to be private, and the type is going to be sprite render. We can name it player sprite render. The second one is also going to be private, but it's going to be of type rigid body 2D. And we can name it player body. After that, we want to initiate them in the start method. Player sprite renderer is going to be get component sprite renderer. And don't forget to open and close the brackets. Next, we need to target the player body. And it's going to be equal to get component. And the component that we want to get is the rigid body 2D. Again, don't forget to open and close the brackets. Now everything is ready to make the player game object invisible. And we want to do that before we invoke the kill player method. To make it invisible, we simply need to disable this sprite render component. To do that, type player sprite renderer dot enabled equals to false. Save this and let's see if it works. So now when we collide with the obstacle, our player game object should disappear. Okay, it's disappearing, however we are still able to move after that. So we need to freeze the position now. And that's also something that we want to do before this function. We need to access one attribute of the rigid body 2D component. So we want to type in player body dot constraints and we want to set that equal to rigid body constraints 2D dot freeze position Y. Since the other positions are already frozen, our object will not be able to move after this. Let's save it and see if it works. Okay, now we have done everything that I wanted to do except the original game has a little color switch logo at the beginning of the play scene. Which we can simply copy from the home scene. So double click to switch to the home scene. And this is what we want to copy. Go back to the play scene and paste it right here. Now simply position it. And maybe we'll want to reduce the scale a little bit. Let's say 0 0.6. After completing our first game, I hope that you learned a lot of useful things and that you understood the basic concepts behind this. The next game should be a lot quicker 
since we don't have to worry about learning these simple concepts and you will be able to grasp the knowledge more efficiently.